2077, Cyberpunk 2077 to be exact, has had a interesting twist of events for the Phantom Liberty DLC that came out. It seems that some things went awry and they had to use the works of AI, artificial intelligence, to finish the DLC. Before we get fully into the topic here, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, share the video out with your friends, anyone out there that you think might benefit from the content that you see here. We talk about a variety of different things and today we're talking about Cyberpunk 2077. And it seems that they used AI to resurrect a video game voice actor in the DLC, in the Cyberpunk universe. This is an interesting story to say the least. This comes from Variety. The Polish video game developer CD Projekt SA has used artificial intelligence to replicate a voice of the late Polish actor Milo Ghost Rekzek? Rekizet? I'm not sure how you would pronounce that last name. Who died in 2021? Ha! You're making a habit of this. Rising from the dead. I actually thought I'd never see you again. His voice was simulated in Phantom Liberty, an extension of the dystopian video game series Cyberpunk 2077. Talk about dystopian, talk about AI. This is absolutely next level when they have to turn around and use someone that passed away and use AI to simulate their voice. I know there's been others out there that, that turn around and use AI to create video montages of, of people online. I've seen a few of them. But this one, per Bur Bloomberg, the company reached out to Rezik's family, which gave him permission to recreate his voice using AI. I'm glad they reached out and didn't just do it. This is the problem that we've had with AI. There's a lot where people will just use it. I use a little bit of AI here and there, and the, sometimes in the thumbnails, sometimes here and there. I, I go through a ton of prompts, but it, it's not anything unheard of. I would much rather prefer to have someone draw them or draw them myself, but I'm not an artist. I'm nowhere close to an artist. I don't have a, a drawing hand to save my life. Uh, I have to sometimes draw a, a street at work, draw the street out uh, where we're, we're standing as we're spotting heavy equipment. And that looks like my, my kid can do better. That's the problem that I have. AI is a useful tool when it's used in a appropriate way. Now, the problem with this, with AI in particular, uh, is it can't be copyrighted. So does that mean that his lines can be technically used in other formats? I'm not entirely sure, and it's um, AI still going through the court system uh, for a lot of it. I know there's a few court cases in front of it. The Game of Thrones writer uh, actually is suing them along with a bunch of other writers where they were suing the AI for things being stolen like with ChatGTP. It, it's an interesting world we live in right now. The dystopian future is here and this is where we are now. We didn't like this approach, CD uh, Project localized director Miko Les Zawid. Zawid, is that it? About the new actor, Zawid referred him to him as one of the best Polish voice talents and praised his performance in the video game as stellar. The process of using AI to replicate Rezik's voice involved hiring another actor to record his character lines, then using a Ukrainian voice cloning software called Respeecher. This software made an algorithmic changing the new voice actors or the actor's voice to sound like Rezix. That's a actually unique situation. So they actually did prompt it with a, a voice actor doing the lines and they just said, we need these lines in this tone, in this, in this voice. That's a very interesting way to reuse AI. You know, the, there's a long debated thing here because this also goes and this also talks about the Hollywood strike that's come down where video games, movies, writers, they're all trying to get away from AI. They're 
They're trying to secure their hold on, on things, but we're in a turmoil sort of recession when it comes to Hollywood movies, when it comes to video games in that, in that way, where there's just not enough good writers and there's not enough good people making these things anymore. And now the CEOs are cutting and slashing things everywhere and prompting to say, hey, you know what, you guys, you guys don't want to help us out. We're going to start using AI if you're not going to help us out and throw us a bone a little bit. But at the same time, you, they, they, they're just trying to make a living. So I, I'm not on either side of the coin when it comes to the writer strikes or, or the video game strike. I think it sucks to go that route. But at the same time, some of the things that they're pushing, like forced diversity and forced DEI initiatives, that makes things very droll and very sterile and it doesn't create a sense of a improvement when it comes to these games or comes to these movies. That's where the problems lie right now because it's not making anyone very good money when it comes down to it. This is a very interesting way to use AI and it's a responsible way, I would say, to use AI. Someone passed away, they're a good voice actor, you needed these few extra lines. Is it weird? Yes, it's very weird to hear a deceased voice come again uh, in a video game after they've passed away. It, but it's a very unique thing to use and it seems that they possibly used it responsibly here. Thanks for watching. I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Cineshadow signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you again very soon.